Hello recording fans, this is a video uh, regarding my Hill Audio Concept 4400 32 channel by 8bus mixing console. I picked this piece up about three months ago in October of 2016 and I re it's in really great shape. And because of the lack of information on the internet and abroad about this particular piece, I wish to make a video just in case there's anybody else there out there like me that uh, are working on these things. Uh, it was made in the mid to late 80s. It uh, has a couple small problems. There's a, a light flickering of the meter bridge, which I don't know if it's a grounding problem. There's a couple channels that are showing signal when there is none. There's a couple channels that where they had the faders replaced that I wish to maybe redo them in a more original model just because they feel a little stiffer compared to the other 30 channels. But I, I couldn't be more pleased. I'm a, I'm a poor guy. I've never owned a, a console before. I do do some recording and because of the price uh, I just couldn't say no for the amount of you know preamps. Uh, if I got six of these things running uh, decently it's more than worth the, the cost. So again it, it wasn't expensive um, Malcolm Hill was the you know the chief behind these things again the mid to late 80s uh, he was mo most famous for large PA systems in the early 80s I believe um, and was known for some unique ideas in EQ and and he, he seemed to like uh, high impedance quite a bit the only balanced outs on this particular piece uh, is the main outs it weighs approximately 2 to 250 pounds. It's over 65 inches wide. It's over 35 inches deep. Um, it could also be used as a live board and was. It came in a, in a big case, which I'll show you in later videos. Um, but heck, you know, a British made console for a, a poor guy. What the heck? And I am a non professional. Uh, who has accumulated a little bit of knowledge and got some equipment and some supplies. I'm going to go through this thing strip by strip to see what the heck I have. Um, and because of the lack of information, I wanted to share it with you in case there's anybody else out there like me that have one of these things. Uh, maybe we can share tips or problem solving together. And uh, in any case, enjoy. And here's a closer look. She's a bit of a beast. It looks great. It comes with the original power supply, which was a bit terrifying to a, a guy that was just used to a, a single unit uh, interface in his rack. Anyway, thank you for joining me. This will be the first video of at least two or three, and uh, Here's the cleaning process of one of the channel strips. Uh, before I show you the cleaning of a strip, um, I did go ahead and I cleaned number one and number two. I took uh, number one completely apart, pulling the uh, knobs off and uh, taking the washers off, breaking it right down um, where you just have the, uh, the circuit board and it is an L-shaped type of circuit board. And I just wanted to see what I had, um, whether taking it completely apart gave me any more access to the small opportunities to get cleaners into the potometers and into the uh, into the switches. Um, and uh, I discovered I didn't have to go to that extreme. But the nice thing about stripping it right down is you're able to really give the uh, the plate a really nice cleaning. But I don't think it's worth going to that point because uh, the circuit board is actually surprisingly fragile. It's married here with just solders um, and uh, it'd be very easy to break something. So I'm uh, number two, I just I, I, I left the, the front plate on and uh, had really good success actually. Um, I still took the buttons off so I could give it a good good cleaning. And I used twine for that. I'll show you that later where 
some of them are a little bit tough this this knob is really tough but if you get a little bit of twine under there and, and pull it, uh, it you're a lot less likely to bust anything in any case uh, I'll show you uh, how to pull this out uh, I'm gonna clean number three this is the one that I'm gonna be demonstrating with so the first thing you do is there's a little sc slot screw that's at the front um, as you see there's some multi-pin plugs back here so I'm going to unplug that and it's in a connector at the front and we gently pull it out and this is the uh, Hill Audio 641A EQ and I have to say I couldn't be more impressed with how channel 1 and channel 2 went as far as the results sound wise um, the EQ is very punchy. It's very it's very versatile. Um, I used a 58 and some headphones uh, to give it a listen. There's there's very little crackle, very little artifacts. There's a small dead spot at the start of the wipe of the trim knob on channel two, but it's very minor. And uh, I actually cleaned the trims twice uh, for best results and because I do test it halfway through and uh, anyway I couldn't be more pleased how this thing is sounding so let's clean number three okay we're gonna clean number three here first off I want to show you the uh, the back of the strip which has all our connectors uh, there's the uh, multi-pin connector that goes into the actual console the XLR in there'll also be an insert point and then a bunch of the uh, routing and, and whatnot beyond that. Um, Malcolm Hill apparently liked high impedance quite a bit. There's no XLR outs, direct outs or anything like that. Um, there is on the main outs of the mixing board but uh, other than that it's high impedance. Which is not a problem if you're not going a million miles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plate off and uh, that will expose our switches and potometers and just for a bit of a close-up here um, we've got our fader with uh, the, the 1 to 8 as far as the busing is concerned and um, we get into our auxiliaries here uh, and we also have our EQ and our EQ is quite interesting it uh, has a sweep. Um, it's very unique how this is set up. And of course, up at the top here are our phantom power and our polarity. And uh, there is a uh, a cutoff at uh, 75 hertz too, which is always kind of handy. So let's clean this guy up. The plate has been removed. Uh, there's just several screws that hold it along the top. Um, there's a section here that has little posts where the screw goes down, uh, giving it support. Uh, they're all Omeg potometers for the most part, and there's an Alps fader there. Um, I've popped off most of the of the buttons, and um, the smaller ones all came off really easily. But there's a there's two big ones. There's a big one here. And a big one there that are, are tough you almost bust it off trying to get it off the sweep button actually does not uh, it stays in it's actually um, there's a stack potometer here that's securely mounted there's no washer and it's actually the uh, the buttons reset so it can stay put um, as far as getting the buttons off that are tough as I said before, there's a bit of a, a trick with um, some twine or a good quality string. Um, let's try to get it underneath. Some people may want to use a, a small screwdriver, but I don't. I don't want to scratch anything. And once you got it under there, you pull straight up. And off she comes. And there's the the pin that 
locks into the front. And this is all hand wired stuff. Amazing. Just because it's easiest to see, I'm going to. Um, I usually start at the at the front with the switches and make my way down. But um, just so it's easy to see, I'm going to clean this double stack here. So what I like to do is is provide a little bit of a barrier with some paper towels. Again, if you you shouldn't be wearing any of your favorite clothing or being you know having this done around anything that uh, too precious because um, as cool as the deoxid is it, uh, it kind of leaves a film on anything that it gets on that's fabric and uh, so in any case um, these particular potometers only have a very very small opening where they can work if you've never used deoxy before, you can adjust the spray. There's low, medium, and high. Always put it on low. Um, it works. You don't need a lot of this stuff. So I'm just gonna go this way first. And then on the other side. course you just work the knob um, you will get a little bit of, of the deoxid that runs on the circuit board it uh, apparently doesn't hurt anything um, you don't want loads of it on I, I tend to use a little cotton swab afterwards to kind of mop up any residues uh, from from the deoxid And then, again, you don't need tons of this. And what you can do, for instance, on this one, especially with this double stack, is I'm going to uh, let this kind of do its thing. Uh, deoxid will, will take a few minutes and, and uh, eat up all, any of the corrosion or oxygen, oxidization uh, of, the, of the wipers. And uh, I'll hit it with a little bit of this uh, F5, which is just a lubricant for the most part and uh, just makes it work even uh, a little smoother and um, as far as the switches are concerned we'll do the switch right beside this double stack there's not a lot of space but there's a little bit of an entrance at the, at the front here it might be more ideal to have it facing down uh, so that the cleaner uh, runs into there but um, it should be fine and I'll just make kind of a little bit of a, a dam there's a little spot there I don't want it spraying in my face and that should be loads as far as using the fader um, version of the deoxid that's up to you it uh, if you have a switch that's not working smoothly, I'm sure use it. Other than that, if things seem to be working pretty good, uh, the the D5 does have uh, a little bit of lubricant in it, and if it uh, if it's just for more getting the um, the crackles and and problems out of it, uh, you should be okay just with the D5. And again, don't be afraid to clean up any excess. I don't see any any runoff. Sometimes if you take this and give her a, a bit of a shake sometimes a little bit will kind of leak out and kind of there's some right there. So uh, as you can see, cotton swab. It doesn't really tremendously hurt the, the circuit board, but it's best not to bathe everything in it, especially the circuit chips and stuff like that. So I always just like to kind of give it a clean up. I haven't had any 
major problems and you, you want to probably wait you know at least 10 minutes but let it sit for an hour or two before you plug it in just in case it, it's uh, it's unlike some contact cleaners it's not instantaneous it uh, the oxid takes five or ten minutes to really completely dry I find and there always might be a little bit of a of a residue there but it, it's uh, it's for conductive stuff so it it should be fine okay we're gonna quick do the uh, the fader I've already pulled off one of the screws already make sure you don't lose the screw okay the fader is just held on by just those wires again it's an it's an Elps fader 740M-10KA made in Japan I didn't see any uh, any evidence of those particular faders online so far so what I'm doing is I'm just taking the D5 which is our cleaner and uh, wiping the pull the rod at the front there as you can see we're getting some black off of there <clears throat> and more importantly the one at the at the bottom that does the actual wipe I believe it's not as dirty um, and then what I like to do, because it is a fader, is use our deoxid fader F5. Which is the lubricant. Oh, that thing's set to medium, it shows you how much stronger it comes out and at the bottom here I want to do a good job with this with the with the fader lube here and I'll even put a little bit more just to make sure that it's uh, smooth and well lubricated Perfect. Uh, lastly, and just real quick, uh, for a quarter inch jacks and whatnot, I I made the mistake on a I cleaned a, a Simmons drum module with the oxit and just kind of sprayed it into the jack, and then I proceeded to spend ten minutes cleaning the deoxid off the circuit board. So what I find is not that they necessarily always will need it. But I just spray a little bit of D5 on a Q-tip and uh, put it in all the quarter inch jacks. And as you can see, it's pretty black. And then just finally, with a, with a clean one, give it one more. Channel strip is uh, put back together and uh, we're into our final steps. So we're going to grab a, a Q-tip with some window cleaner and uh, make sure it's not too soaked. And we're just going to uh, detail the buttons in the face of the channel strip. And I find just getting a little bit of window cleaner on top of them to, to start. Um, does a tremendous job on, on getting off any oil or grime or grit and uh, you can also go around the buttons 
you want to make sure that none is getting into the into the strip so you don't want to pour it on too too much but after you get a little bit of window cleaner on each of the buttons um, kind of let it sit and then if you look into the light you can see if there's any you know tough spots and uh, you don't want to take any of the graphics off and I find a q-tip is is just fine enough to you know unless you take this hole apart and you're able to give the plate a nice cleaning which I did with the first one uh, again you're more apt to do it this way just out of the safety for the board because again it is so easy to break the circuit board so I'm going to give it a good cleaning um, we'll see you back at the board channel number three inputted I very crudely have a set of headphones uh, sitting on top of the camera uh, so you, you know maybe in later videos uh, we'll give you a, a better idea of what uh, what it sounds like authentically but in any case, um, check, 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 check. The trim knob is pretty clean. Hey, 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 check one, two. Check, 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 check. You know, this thing's pretty clean. Hey, 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 hey. One, two, one, two. Just to give you a lowdown on the EQ, just because uh, uh, Milcom Hill had such a... Uh, uh, was famous for having really unique uh, features to his equipment. Um, our EQ is 12.5k at the top and it goes minus 12 to plus 12 dB. Second down is 4.5k, then 1.5k. We've got a, a 500, uh, 500 hertz, um, 150 hertz, 60 hertz, and then there's kind of a, a trim level here for the sweep. And the sweep goes from 50 hertz all the way up to 5 kilohertz. And uh, check, 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 check. I'm really pleased how this uh, particular uh, console's turning out. I'm, a, I'm not a very rich man. I would never have an opportunity normally to have a British-made console in my house. Uh, but just because of uh, a very nice uh, person and, a, uh, and uh, some good fortune, I was able to... Uh, acquire this uh, piece of equipment from him and so far no regrets so we'll see you in later videos take care